Hi, I'm Jim Sanderson. I'm the founder and director of the Small Wildcat Conservation Foundation. It's great to see all the familiar faces and to see some new faces. Our mission has always been to conserve small wildcats and their habitats worldwide. Here are some of those small wildcats. There are 33 species, so this seems like a pretty tall order. What do we have to do to achieve this mission? Well, I work with colleagues all around the world uh, to reduce threats to small wildcats. So here are some of my colleagues, uh, Ashantu Dugula in Sri Lanka, Okan Bayer and Buyandelgar in Mongolia, and Constanza Napolitano in Chile. I work with in-country colleagues. Here are some of the threats that the small cats face. My colleagues and I made a list of about 16 threats globally that we have to deal with. I want to call your attention to one uh, specifically, number 13, in retaliatory killing. Uh, this refers to the fact that small wild cats like to eat chickens. And when they prey upon people's chickens, they usually become dead small wild cats. So that's one of the threats that we deal with almost universally. Each program is organized the same way. We have a network of uh, volunteers that we create. We work with rescue centers. Um, we have community conservation programs that deal with multiple stakeholders. We have children's programs uh, to reduce future threats. We work with local, regional, and national governments to align uh, government policies that are often conflicting. We we're, we're always raising awareness, although we realize that this doesn't necessarily change behavior. We do surveys uh, to look for uh, places where there are these small wild cats. Of course, we do monitoring to see how we're doing. And as a last resort, we encourage uh, anti-poaching patrols in national and state protected areas, although we've never had to do this. We have 12 programs around the world dedicated to 17 different species. Each of the programs has multiple threat reduction projects. So for example, the Fish and Cat Conservation Alliance is one program and we have uh, threat reduction projects in every country where there are fishing cats. And in some countries we have multiple projects reducing threats to fishing cats. Uh, and here are some of my colleagues around the world uh, doing what they do best. So these 12 programs dealing with 17 species, we have six in Central and South America, one in Africa, the African golden cat that I'd like to talk to you about later, and, uh, and seven in, um, in, uh, in Asia. To learn more about our programs, I've asked my colleague today who from Brazil to talk about the uh, tiger cat conservation initiative. Now there are uh, two species of tiger cats and uh, today who runs our initiative on both of those species. So I'd like to turn it over to my colleague today. Hi, uh, we are in the Brazilian Northern Savannas, the setting at Mirador State Park, where we have our tiger cat conservation project. The project has several targets, population monitoring for the tiger cats, habitat monitoring, um, and threat mitigation, which includes also environmental education. Other than that, we are uh, setting new goals uh, involving local uh, residents in the park to get involved in, in, pro in the project activities, as well as uh, private landowners that own land connected to the park so that we can have a corridor for tiger cats 
from the park to the outside world. Another goal that we have that we have not been able to start yet is to help out the local community. Although this is a state park which would not allow people to live inside its borders, uh, when the park was created back in the 1980s, uh, several families were already residents inside the park area. And for them to be removed outside the park borders, they would need to get compensation, financial compensation, compensation, which neither the federal government or the state government have money for it. So we have to reconcile ways, we have to find ways to reconcile people living within the park borders. Park borders. Uh, Mirador State Park, Tiger Cat Kingdom. This is Tiger Cat Tracks on Sand. This is the place where I learned how to identify small cat tracks on sand, which is the hardest one. And as you can see, the park is indeed Tiger Cat Kingdom. An integral part of the Mirador Tiger Cat project is uh, population monitoring because that's what's going to tell us whether the conservation actions are in fact having an effect in um, securing the long-term viability of the tiger cat population. Um, and the way we monitor the cats is through uh, camera traps. Through the population monitoring we found out that the species avoids open savanna formations and those open savanna formations actually make up half of the park the park surface so that means half of the park is unsuitable and throughout the distribution of the species um, large areas are natural open savanna formations but the, the species is not there so which means that uh, the preliminary population estimates uh, are actually inflated and that the situation of the species is more critical than what we previously thought. Uh, this is our main monitoring site and at this very place, this is where we photograph the most the tiger cats in Mirador State Park. And the population here was estimated to be the highest, not only in the park, but in the entire planet. Uh, we have we estimated the population here to be 25 individuals per 100 square kilometers. And this is the next generation of all life conservationists being trained. Sen sensitivity. This is Moisés Pereira, he's a park resident, he was born in the park and now he's part of our conservation pro uh, uh, project uh, with the Tiger Cats in Mirador. It's our intent to have people from the community involved with park activities and he's now one of, he's part of the team now. Então, sou Moisés, tenho 46 anos de idade, nasci e me criei no parque. Até hoje vivo, tenho muito, muita honra de, de viver nessa área, mesmo com dificuldade, com 12 filhos para cuidar, mas sempre me sinto muito feliz e hoje fazer parte dessa equipe que está aqui dentro, trabalhando junto com a gente. Oh, eu sou o Félix, é, trabalho, a, a, eu vivo aqui. Há 42 anos, aqui nessa área do parque, nasci e me criei e, na verdade, eu faço parte hoje do projeto do Pintadinho, né? These are the main threat to Tiger Cats in Mirador. 
During the population monitoring, we noticed the domestic dogs at the very same cameras of Tiger Cat's pigs, and that in a lot of them they were showing signs of diseases. This, Im this immediately turned on the alarm, showing that diseases might be a serious threat to Tiger Cats there. It turned out that dogs were at 80% of the cameras that photographed Tiger Cats, indicating that they are both using the same areas. And in 65% of the of tiger cat habitat in Mirador State Park is impacted by dogs, which is quite a lot. Clinical signs indicated the presence of the dreadful canine distemper virus, which later we confirmed to be very active in the park, as the virus was detected in an alarming 80% of the dogs evaluated. There is to say, 80% of the dogs tested positive for the virus. Olá, me chamo Ana Caroline, sou médica veterinária que pertence ao grupo do professor Tadeu Gomes de Oliveira e hoje o nosso trabalho é fazer a revacinação dos animais que já foram vacinados contra cinco doenças, inclusive também a raiva. Nós vamos fazer as vacinas desses animais e após a nossa segunda dose de vacinação esses animais serão revacinados anualmente. Todos os animais que foram vacinados, eles foram testados contra, é, eles foram testados para sinomose e parvovirose. The Environmental Education Program makes use of a Human Perceptions Questionnaire that we do in the beginning and the end of the process so that we can have an, we can have an idea on the progress of our uh, actions, our environmental education actions. Our preliminary assessment of the questionnaire indicated that the community outside the park had better knowledge of African wildlife than that of their own backyard, Mirador State Park. Because of this, we developed a series of games, brochures, and a booklet, especially during the COVID lockdown, uh, which uh, you can see being used here. A educação ambiental é uma parte fundamental do nosso trabalho, porque assim nós conseguimos formar futuros colaboradores para que no futuro eles sejam multiplicadores de conhecimento. Pensando nisso, nós desenvolvemos alguns jogos educativos para que as crianças aprendam um pouco sobre os animais que eles têm aqui dentro do parque e repliquem esse conhecimento. Essa primeira etapa consiste em a criança aprender um pouco sobre a ecologia do animal, como o animal se comporta, é, diferenciar o animal do outro para que eles utilizem esse conhecimento em um segundo jogo, que é o jogo da conservação. Né? Eles vão aplicar os conhecimentos aqui aprendidos nesse jogo da conservação do, em prol dos animais que vivem dentro do parque de adoro virador. Então, vai ficar pouco, vai ver que vai sair todo mundo na volta. This is our environmental education done outside the park. Uh, we are just getting back with those kids after a long wait due to COVID. Classes have not returned, but they have. They were assembled today here uh, at their request, actually, uh, to work to play with the new game and stuff that they heard about. We are monitoring habitat loss and fire through satellite images. Several borders of the park are already surrounded by a sea of soy, corn and eucalyptus. Images have shown that the extensive 2020 fires affected a large part of the tiger cat's prime habitat, as you can see on the red dots in the satellite map. You have seen throughout this presentation a lot of our activities here. 
Uh, to summarize it, we can say that our ultimate goal is to have to guarantee that Mirador State Park can act as an insurance policy against the northern tiger cat Leopardus tigrinus extinction. Why is that? Because the park has a self-sustaining population of tiger cat. It's one of the very few protected areas in the planet, not only in Brazil, that can protect a self-sustaining, a long-term self-sustaining population of the Pintadinho, as it is locally known. But uh, for that, we need to guarantee that disease, which is the main threat for the tiger cat and other wildlife here, at, as especially the carnivore and the other small cats, is diseases from domestic dogs. And for that, we will need to take continuous, continuous actions of vaccination throughout the coming years. If we do not do that, outbreaks, mo even moderate outbreaks of uh, canine distemper and parvovirus, which are present in the population here, can wipe out the population of the tiger cats and who uh, God knows which other species can also uh, go along. Uh, the title of the presentation mentions hurdles and joys in small cat conservation. The hurdles you've seen throughout this presentation, there are a lot of them, several of them, but most of them all focus to one part, lack of funding. For that, we need your help, we need your support. And one thing that moved us considerably is while doing uh, the project in close proximity to the community, seeing the, uh, their very poor quality of living, there is no way we cannot try to do things to improve this. One idea that came is beekeeping for honey production. We are hoping that this will be an alternative, even for cattle raising, pigs and, ca and, and cattle as well. The choice is to when we have our activities, our educational material being used or be, being intended to be used by the federal, by the state government in the local, in the public school system of the state. This is very fulfilling for us. And when we see small kids living inside the park, begging their parents to follow us and following us to learn and becoming like really interested in wildlife conservation, this is very gratifying for us, especially for me. Uh, I have I come from a very strong background of conservation and this is uh, a very important part of my doings here another thing is the Pintadinho the tiger cat because of what's being done here and because of the importance of Mirador State Park for the northern tiger cat worldwide conservation the cat was chosen by the state we proposed and the state uh, uh, environmental secretariat approved to use the cat as the state symbol of conservation this was very gratifying for us very gratifying a take-home message that we can have from this project is that the Pintadinho as a flagship species could be uh, a ticket could be a way of a better quality of living for the local population. And this is something meaningful and worth working for. And that's what we are going to do. With your support, we will get there. Thank you.
Thank you, Tadeo. Very nice presentation. It tells exactly what we're doing. Of course, we have uh, global small cat summits. Our second summit was in 2019, and we plan on having a third summit probably late in um, uh, 2021 or next year. And it'll be in uh, Singapore. I want to remind everybody that uh, conservation is really a social science. Uh, it doesn't belong in biology departments. We work with children to change the future and we work with adults to change the present, to make sure that there is a future. I'm, I'm very optimistic that right now we're pushing as many uh, species around the world through a bottleneck and that the next generation, it's a tsunami of conservationists waiting to change the world. Thank you for joining me in today.